C.J. Everson. I bring you greeting from the Second Mountain Zion Baptist Church, where Dr. Keona Strait Jr. is the pastor. Uh, today I am speaking with you and helping to facilitate some discussion regarding the ministry of women, and more specifically, best practices for women ministries. So let us go and pray. Father God, we thank you, and we honor you. We acknowledge that you are our sovereign Father. We thank you that you brought us out here today, and we ask, oh God, that you condition our hearts to receive absolutely everything that you want for us to have and to know and to put into practice. Lead and guide us, God, in your way. Guide us by your Holy Spirit, and do a magnificent work in the earth through us. It is in Jesus' name we live this prayer. Amen. Amen. So sisters, let me just tell you a little bit about us. We don't have but so much time. A little bit about myself. I am a daughter of God. I am a follower of Christ. I am currently writing a book, the content of which he gave me concerning who he is and who we are in him. I'm also writing another book or some other books of prayers. I'm the wife of Minister Aaron Evanson Jr., mother or stepmother of Solomon Evanson. I have a few godchildren, and I am a sister in Christ to many. I currently serve at Second Mount Zion, where I work um, teaching and facilitating discussions on my stewardship, tithes and offering. Also, our fifth Sunday, fifth Sunday morning word study. Uh, intercessory prayer. I'm an intercessory prayer warrior. I work on our marriage ministry. And then finally, I'm the leader of the Daughters of Light Women's Ministry at Second Mount Zion. And so, you know a little bit about me. Let us move forward into this discussion of ministry of women and best practices regarding meeting the needs of women in the body of Christ. I did a little bit of a search because I wanted to find out um, some of the, what others are thinking is the benefit of women's ministry. And so I want to ask you this because I do need you to engage in conversation with me. And then I'll also share some of what I found. So what do you think is the importance and the benefit of women's ministry? Anybody? What's the benefit? What's the importance of women's ministry? Why do we need that? To encourage and empower each other. That's very good. Why do we need that? <laughs> Why do we need encouraging? Why do we need to be empowered and supportive of one another? You know, we as women, we take on so many different roles. We um, from day to day, we are, we are we're mothers, we're cooks, we're uh, nurses, we're doctors, we're so many things. Uh, and for so long, we don't uh, take care of ourselves for one thing. And then the other part of that is, when you talk about supporting each other, sometimes you feel like you're out here alone doing it all by yourself. And when you're out here by yourself and you feel like you don't have to help, you, you, you just don't even know if you're going to make it. Right. But if you got that sort of compassion on the back, you got that sort of and just a little bit. You might come on and see what it is on me. Absolutely. Thank you very much, sis. I appreciate that. Is there anybody else who wants to share? I, yes, I, I certainly agree because as women, sometimes we, we're given a whole lot of things to do, especially when it's discovered, whatever your skill set is. Okay. And you just bombard with all kinds of tasks. And we do it all. You know, we will we'll, we'll visit the city, we'll do, the, we'll do what the pastor wants, we'll, we'll set up different ministries. And we, we, we do our role, we do whatever. But I think we need encouragement because it will help us to fulfill our purpose. Because God has us here for a reason. Thank you very much. Both of you have touched on So I want to share a couple of the things that I found uh, that, that was out on, on the web. Uh, it allows someone to focus on Bible study, support groups, events for women besides the pastor or the pastor's wife. Uh, so it, it, it helps to provide what the women need and that doesn't just fall on 
the pastor, and the pastor's wife. It gives someone to talk to, pray with, women in the church, so you can share this big picture of women, of ministry for women. It's, it's a shared thing. Now it's not just a, a one person thing. Women's ministry is not to compete with the pastor and the overall ministry. It's not a competition. It's not that. What is it? It's there for support. The pastor supports the women's ministry. The women's ministry supports the pastor. And so we need to make sure we understand that because sometimes it can be Amen. It gives voice to the church staff. Things on the church's calendar that speaks to the needs of women. Because if there is no woman to say what we need, our needs may not be met. Yes. Okay. It also allows the biblical model of women encouraging. Anytime women are growing and maturing in their faith, that's a great thing. Would you agree? Amen. Okay. So these are some of the things that I found online that just help to share the benefit of what uh, women's ministry uh, is and can do for the body of Christ. So, by a show of hands, who came here today because you're trying to start a women's ministry? Anybody trying to start? of women's ministry. Okay. Anybody here because you want to revive your existing women's ministry? Anybody trying to revive your existing ministry? Okay. And then finally, how many want this session to address ministering to, ministering through, ministering with women? Okay, and that helps me now to how I'm going to uh, present and get engage you in conversation. So I've served as the Daughters of Light Women's Ministry Leader at Second Mount Zion uh, since 2018. And when I was asked in 2017, third quarter of 2017, I did what I recommend to you as the first best practice that we will discuss. What do you think I did? What do you think that first best practice is? When the pastor approached me and asked if I would lead the women's ministry, I did this thing first. We don't think it is. Who said that? Who said it? Yeah. Let's get this something. That's First, best practice. Why? Why? I won't. I won't answer it. I'll ask you to answer. Yes, ma'am. It's the key to what is prayer. First of all, what, what is prayer? Yeah, it's that line of communication with God. That's the first thing. And so, if we are leading, if we are serving then we certainly need to make certain that we're in line with what the Lord God Almighty will for his daughters, for our sisters in Christ. And so the very first thing, not just in women's ministry, but period, everything, very first best practice, communication with the Lord. Get your guidance, get your, get your direction from him. And here's the thing, it's not just praying, me talking to him. What happened? What else needs to happen? I need to listen, need to, listen to what he says, how he directs, how his spirit guides me. Yes. But I don't just need to listen to it. What do I need to do? I need to act on it. I need to put feet to what he says. I need to obey it and do it the way he directs the way he directs. So we pray about it, we listen to him, and then we act, we put it into practice. You agree with me? Okay. So now at this point, you may sing a 
little off, but I assure you it's not. Be sensitive to the nature and construct of women. Be sensitive to the nature and construct of women. Why? Are we men? Do we do things the way men do? Do we think the way they think? Do we act the way they act? If we did, some of the stuff that we see in the communities would not be. Some of the divorce rates and, rates and things like that wouldn't be what they are. We are different. And there was something that Pastor uh, T.D. Jake said that really resonated in my heart. He said that God took something out of man. Mm -hmm. If he took it out of man, mm -hmm. is it still in him? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what did he do with what he took out of man? Mm -hmm. He made mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Took it out mm -hmm. and made her. Oh, the two make a whole. See, he was a whole man before God did that and did this. And now the two man and woman makes the whole. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, yeah. And we so desperately want our husbands to kind of be like us. Can't you, can't you be more considerate? Can't you be more sensitive? Can't, is that them? If it were them, God wouldn't have told them in marriage, in that marriage setting, he wouldn't have told them, consider it. Be considered. Love your wife the way Christ loved the church. He wouldn't have told them that. And they so desperately want us to be like them. Why we talk so much? They just, you know, if you talk to your husband, if you're married or whatever, and you say something to them, they want it to be quick. And they'll give you a quick answer. Just do this. Like, that won't solve it. That's not it. We're different. Made differently purposefully. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be sensitive to the nature and the construct of women. Why? Because in ministry, we're ministering. Mm -hmm. And so I need to understand, because I don't know everything about, well, we're all different still. And I need to understand who you are and what you to. You said something about skill set. Once somebody find out that somebody will work, might not even be in the skill set. Just a willing worker. Oh, it is on. A willing worker, just a willing, that might not even be in the skill set. So sisters, we need to understand one another and we need to work in our skill set, in our gift, in the anointing, in what God has given us. Yes, sis. Give me your name too, please. Jump in here right now that something that just keeps coming into my spirit is how do we fit our young girls and young ladies, you know, kids, you know, young, uh, with, uh, young and 18 girls and then those young ladies that are transitioning into adulthood, how do we incorporate them into this fold? That's beautiful. I'm going to see if anyone else wants to address it and then I'll take it. Anybody else who is doing that or have done that? any experience that you want to share. We have something at our church um, that's called Our Sister, My Sister's Keep, and it's for the younger ones. Because in that group, it, it became dormant because the leader of it got married, moved away, but she's back now. But in that group, it was some teaching, some instruction, some guidance to help them to look at one another as my sister's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. I am to care. For. So there's some instruction, there's some teaching, some development, some spiritual growth and development that has to go on. We don't just naturally know things. Mm -hmm. We have to be taught. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yeah. And I know Mount Zion has some programs for our young uh, children as well. I guess for me, I'm trying to figure out um, how do we close that gap in terms of actually allowing them to see uh, women, uh, older women, their their mothers, their grandparents, their aunts, like in action, like to really be a part, to bridge that gap from, you know, to make them be prepared to be able to step out and 
take on those roles because some some young girls become uh, parents at a very early age and then they got to just dive on in there. And so I'm just trying to just figure out if there's a way, I don't know, this is just something that just popped into my mind just now, so I'm just trying to connect to that. And as you say some things, I'm thinking of some things that could possibly be put in place. If you had something like that to catch them early, mm -hmm. to catch them early, to teach them to look out for one another, and there are some things that you need to pour into them. That can be linked because that ministry, my sister's keeper, fell under the umbrella of the Daughters of Light Women's Ministry. So as they got up in age, they transitioned right into the women's Daughters of Light Women's Ministry. There were things that we did that they could not do. They could sit in on those things. They could be a part of it. And if you wanted to establish something where it just leads right in, that's something that can be done. Pray about it and ask the Lord to lead you because he knows your heart. You're sharing your heart with us now, and he knows that. And I don't think that is something that would displease him. I think that would please him because there are some who are falling through the gaps, and we don't want that. We don't want our daughters, we don't want our sisters, our younger sisters falling through the cracks. We want to have, have them to come along, to bring them along, carry them along, teach them. We need to do all of that so that they can work and function in their call, their anointing, their purpose. I hope that was helpful. And then I can possibly talk with you a little bit more. No, okay. Okay. Yeah. Pray about it and ask him to lead you and what will he have you to do in that regard, to reach. Okay. So, sisters, um, that second one was to be sensitive. Um, what I want to do is just share a little bit about the Daughters of Light. I know you didn't come here for me to teach on that, but that's the experience that I have and I want to share it with you. Because when I told you I went and prayed about it, I didn't come back to the pastor for three months later. And he didn't say, well, it took you so long to get back. I asked somebody else. He didn't do that. But those three months I was praying, Father, I know what you've placed in my heart to do. Is now the time. Is this the move? Is this the shift that you want from me? And so as things just started coming, I started writing down. And so I got the vision, what he wanted to do for the women, and then the mission, how will we accomplish what he wants to do for her. And here's the thing, that fell up under the, 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 the vision of the house. So you can't have a mission and a vision for your, your women that's outside of the umbrella of the house, the vision of the house. And so with that coming that way, that let me know that I was on board, I was on point. And then our ministry has, it's a, it's a three-tiered or three-point focus. Three-point focus. Spiritual growth and development. Sisters living. Charity and mission. If it doesn't fall in those three things, we don't do it. Spiritual growth and development, sisterhood, charity and mission. And I recommend that. Now, whatever it is that your house is doing, make sure, of course, that it falls in. But I don't think any of what I just suggested wouldn't fall in that category. And it's important. So it's important to assess the needs of the women that you're serving. Assess the needs. Why? So the ministry can help meet the needs. Yes. Be sensitive to it. Assess, what, what do we need? If you see that there's a need for a certain type of spiritual growth and development, then start doing it. Our mission, how do we, how do we reach our, our vision? How do we reach that objective? How do we reach that goal? We host. We host Dr. Fonda. Um, we do real talk once a month. And so when, I know I'm kind of jumping, but during COVID, our ministry did not stop. Our ministry did not stop. We had real talk discussions every month, teleconference. 
She hosted one about the company we keep. The things that we saw that there's a need for about the company we keep, I, I don't know why that one. <laughs> but she, she, she talked to us about that. We had guests facilitators, and then we had facilitators in the house to handle that. And I'm saying all of that is say, assess the needs, and then provide what is necessary to help meet the need. Because we try to encourage the sisters to walk in their purpose and their call. And if there is some spiritual growth and development necessary for it, provide it. Sisterhood. You know we like to talk and get together and do things. So make it amenable for that. Now we couldn't do a whole lot of that together one on one, especially with COVID going on like that. But that conversation, us doing that, that was great. We also, the Charity Mission is one of our three foci. Um, last year, we made uh, care packages and gift baskets um, so that, um, here you go, sis. Thank you. And we went to Atlanta. We gave out gift baskets to the homeless, male, female. We went to Tifton, gave out gift, gift bag, care packages that had, I uh, forget, PPE in it, snacks in it, socks in it, blankets in it, trays, water. I mean, we, it was so full. People were like, I want one of these. The people who were working at the centers, I want one of these. It wasn't just junk. We weren't giving junk. Give them something that you would want. Lotions and uh, you know, whatever it was, all of that. We gave it. <coughs> we delivered there. We delivered to Valdosta. Two places in Valdosta. And of course, we delivered here. Liberty House and Albany Rescue Mission. Still active. Charity and mission. And so what I'm saying to you sisters, do an assessment of the women that you serve. Do an assessment and then meet the needs. Because somebody has a heart for the homeless. Somebody has a heart for the needy. Somebody likes to just do sisterly things. Have fun. Do it. Have, go bowling. We rented the bowling alley on base. The whole bowling, we rented it. And then all of the sisters came. Shoes, because we paid for them. So the snack, they had to pay for their own snacks. But the shoes and that. And so what I'm saying to you, assess the needs and then meet the needs. Have yourself a good team, a good committee too. And then it, it doesn't have to be just one committee. You, you, you see, you may have a fundraising committee. Make sure your fundraisers are approved, of course, by the house, by the pastor. Something like a community yard sale. Yes. Yeah, all that stuff, you know you need to be getting rid of. You know it. You know you got stuff that you need to be getting rid of. And if you had a community yard sale, you get to get rid of that stuff and the proceeds support the women's ministry and the activities. And so I'm just throwing these things out to you for you to have that in mind. And don't be in a box. Come outside of the box. Yeah. We used to have fifth Sunday dinners, and they were free. Ooh. Fifth Sunday dinners, and they were free. Our budget for that was like two hundred fifty dollars. Because we had, I forget the groceries. It may have been Harvey's. We let them cater the chicken, and we made the rice and the green beans, all the cake, and that was it. Everybody got a free meal. Now, I said fundraiser, right? But guess what? Everybody at church on fifth Sunday, you all come on back and get a dinner. And they did. And so when we were doing something at the church and we asked the body to help, guess what? They helped. Why? Because the daughters of light 
gave away free dinners on the fifth Sunday, every fifth Sunday. And so what I'm saying to you, think outside of the box. Do a little something that helps you women. We have we have t-shirts. I mean, we I ask every woman at the church if she will give five dollars a month to help support the ministry. That's 60 for the year. We got so many women in the church. If you did that, that helps to support. And when they do, when the 60 is in, guess what? Get a t-shirt. One year. The other year. We got red. We got yellow. We had umbrellas. I'm just saying to you, that was something that brought about the sisterhood too. Because when we had something at the church, we would ask, sisters, will you wear your daughters of light t-shirt? And some would have on this color and that color, would, unless we said, well, you red, wear your red. But otherwise, and so when somebody saw, all they saw was this beautiful bouquet of women, but unified. So that's what I'm saying. You've got to build relationship with the women. Everybody will not participate with everything you do. That's why it's important to assess the needs and assess the skill set. That's very important. It's very important to make sure you have the contact information. Dr. Glover said that I need numbers, names, almost everything except the social. It's important. She communicated the importance of that. When a new member comes, I reach out. I know I need members. And I said, I have something already, a little template. I shoot them a text. Sister Fonda is on our, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, picking on you like that, but she's on the I have a Remind group. If you have any children or grandchildren and they use Remind, I set one up <laughs> to put a supply. You know, the school system used that, but I use it to get our announcements out. So when there's something that's going on, I shoot it out. I can't call everybody. I do make calls because some people don't use social media and all of that. So if a telephone call, if that's what I need to do, I'll do that. But I don't always just call when I want something. If I hear when your birthday is, it's in my calendar. So when your birthday comes, I'm calling and singing. I'm not the best singer, but you know what? They laugh and they thank you. Thank you for doing that. Building relationship. And so I believe the pastor wonders, how am I getting some of these people to do some of the things I'm getting them to do? I really believe he's wondering that. Why? Relationship building. And so there are some that I can just come to and say, hey, we need this. We need help in this regard. And they will, if they can. And if they can, I say, thank you for considering. I'll be back. I'll hit you again. I'll be back. I'm saying all of this to you to say, these are the kinds of things that help women. Because we don't just get with people and just let our hair down. It, it, relationship builds that. Causes us to grow together. And then in that, we kind of let our hair, hair down. I want to ask, I'm going to pause a minute because I know our time. Our time is up, isn't it? Wow. He did? I thought he said 10 after. <laughs> wow, our time is up already. Um, let me get some feedback from you. Let me get some comments from you and then we'll just you know, anybody has anything that you want to say? Any suggestions that you want to offer to help make your women's ministry any better? Well, I don't think it's uh, time to put a plug in for mental health awareness month. Okay. And I think, um, especially people of color, have not paused or taken their mental health um, made it a priority. And if, you know, I'm just saying we have to start treating our mental health as part of our physical health and check in with ourselves. Like you said, at the start, we take on so many roles. We're doing and doing and doing, but we don't do self-care. 
and as part of self care is checking in, you know, with how am I feeling? Am I okay? Do I do something? And so I think as part of mental health awareness, I would just like to offer that to the ladies that we got to do self care. Uh, like my therapist said, we have to put our own oxygen mask on before we can help somebody else. They teach us that on the airplane. That's right. You cannot put your little kids oxygen mask on, your baby's oxygen mask, so you get yours on. Because if you pass out, you don't get to anybody. Absolutely. That's so and that, that, that's really good. Our physical and our mental health is really key. And like I said, you know, God wired us differently. He made us differently. And so because of that, we need to understand that and take care of ourselves because we do a lot of nurturing and helping to take care of others. And so, of course, we need to take care of ourselves. And that's not being selfish. That's self-care. That's not being selfish. You know when, you, you know when you're being selfish. <laughs> you know the difference between being selfish and self-care, and that's not that, okay. Uh, let me do this last little piece and then we're, we're finished. Remain godly, remain sisterly, remain approachable, remain grateful, remain appreciative with everyone you encounter, whether you get what you ask or not. Do this service as unto God always. Yeah. And if you do that, if you keep that in mind, that removes some of those factors that will prevent you from moving forward in ministry. If, you, if you're doing this, I'm doing it as unto God. The other things that would have made you pause or wait or I don't like the way that was said or done to me, that will stop that. Mm -hmm. Because your focus isn't on this. Mm -hmm. Your focus is on this. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So do it as unto God. And then you'll be fulfilled. And your ministry will have the desired outcome. Why? God will see to it. Why? Because he's awesome like that. He's just right. something else. Right. And the other thing, it is ultimately his will for his daughters. For his church. We're all a part of the body of Christ. So, may God bless each of you and in each part of the body of Christ that your congregation functions in. So we're all part of the one body, but over here might be the arm, over here might be the leg, back there might be the eyes or the head. Yeah. We're all part of the one body of Christ. And let's keep that in mind. Let's not compete with one another. There's no com competition, there's no superiority, there's no inferiority. Let's keep that in mind, sisters. Because I promise you, I assure you, Satan will use whatever he can to bring about division. Unified body. So let us go in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this occasion and for this day. The time was short, but I think what you shared was really good and received. And so, Father God, give us the strength that we need to put it into practice and be glorified, God. Be glorified in this earth, for your light is much needed. And so we're asking that you shine your light through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, sisters.